Yeah, well, my name is Harry Warner. I'm a former professor of mathematics and business computing at Ryerson in Toronto. Um, by pure luck, I came out here in 1990. Sorry, 1970. God, the years. No, hold up. 1990 was right. Um, and managed to buy this property, which I've held on to since. We now have um, 14 adults and six children living here in a variety of different buildings, as Forrest will show you. Um, the authorities, the Islands Trust and CRD, are not happy about it, and um, they don't offer a decent solution. Well, they actually, they did offer a solution a couple of months back, where we take down all the properties and replace them with one big building. They forgot to, to mention where the million-plus dollars would come from to build the new building to the crazy building codes that we have here in uh, BC. I can offer rents, and I put that in quotes, at a very, very low rate, so about a quarter of what the going rate would be. As a result of that, our people, we have no tenant problems, because once somebody gets in here, they're happy and they, they behave. Um, our vacancies usually last 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, before the word gets out of there's a line up at the gate. Yeah. And it's been a happy little community, not without its, you know, ups and downs, but mostly we get along just fine. The buildings, as you'll probably see from the video, are spread out fairly well. So, in fact, some days, sometimes I could go for a week without seeing, let's say, Molly or Will or whatever, um, unless I go over to see them specifically. So, um, there we are. Okay, the big house, um, I actually came out here with a, with a girlfriend from the way past. That's, that's a very long story, we won't go into that. And because she was American, um, we had to get married. It's another shotgun wedding in my history. Um, and so we lived in this house here, and we got along fine for a couple of years. And incidentally, on Salt Spring, there is a, a fairly well-established fact that couples come out here and they last typically no longer than two years, many of them. Yeah, a year to two years, and the, the reasons for that are, I suppose, many. But so um, we lived in there, it's a three-bedroom house, and um, two years after we came out here, it became evident that we weren't getting along. And so I moved to the hen house, which you'll see in a while is actually now a kombucha brew house, and um, lived happily there in 140 square feet for about 10 years. So right now the house is, is occupied by a wonderful couple, James and Jade, who actually came here as refugees. They had been staying on a, I better not name it, place down in the valley where the landlord, who was supposed to be an eco-friendly, all sorts of things, the landlord became abusive in terms of uh, food uh, provision, work requirements, and so on. They stayed in here, which is actually only 80 square feet, for almost a year before the house became vacant. Um, so now they are in there, and she runs a business making beeswax wrappers, which are, you know, a replacement or a, a substitute for plastic covering for food, which has been very successful. He does a mushroom capsule business, which is also quite successful. This little building started out at 80 square feet, and um, then a couple moved in there, and they extended it a bit, and then another couple moved in there, about a year ago, and they've extended it a bit more, and it's it's really a lovely building. Is there electricity in this space? Yes, all of our buildings have electricity, water, internet, of course, and what else do you need in modern life? Everybody has um, a wood stove. Well, no, that little one doesn't, but all the others do have wood stoves, and we've got a huge supply of timber up the back, so firewood isn't a problem. Now the greenhouse doesn't look too great at this time of the year, but this is the greenhouse I built uh, shortly after I came out here. I had lots of money back then because I'd sold a house in Toronto and my wife had sold her house in the States. Um, but then when we split up I suddenly became quite poor, but that, that's another story. That's when I moved into the hen house. Um, we like to share this property so people have, let's say, one person at this corner, another person at that corner and so on. And it's it's quite productive, it does really quite well. In fact, 
I wonder if there's one left. No, I don't think there is. That's a pomegranate tree. And this summer and last summer we got 12, pom 12 14 pomegranates on it. And they just tasted so good. They're really oh, quite different <laughs> from what you get in the store. Okay. So this is cob. Do you know about cob? A little bit, but yeah. yeah, if you want to explain it, that would be great. It's very labor intensive. So I always say to people that you either have to be very rich or have lots of friends to uh, build cob. But what Molly, who lives here with her husband and two children, um, she's part of a collective called the Mud Girls. And that's well looking, worth looking into. Mudgirls.ca, not .com. .com is a different type of mud girl. Um, the thing about cob is that, first of all, you've got to have really good foundation. So we'd collect those stones or rocks because we didn't weren't didn't have access to any here, and then every bit of this material was put on by hand. So yes, we built this about God, it's over ten years ago now. And the beauty of cob, of course, is that you can have, you can have all sorts of strange shapes, and um, then that addition was put on when they decided to have some children. We've got two beautiful girls who were born on the property, which is nice. This building is what we call slip straw, and it's a conventional building in terms of uh, framing. But then between the, the joists, we have what we call slip straw. And so the way it works is that we get straw, or in our case, not spar canary grass. You put in um, a suspension of clay and kind of mix it up like you would a salad. And then on the inside you put pl uh, plywood and then on the outside a short piece of plywood and you push the the straw down here move this up so 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 and so on and then when this one is done you move the inside plywood to the next one and the same thing again and in our climate in the summer we, we usually do it um, that straw would have dried out in something like a week maybe 10 days and then plastered with a, a again a uh, clay plaster with sometimes a little bit of lime in it which lime actually is eco-friendly in that it produces carbon dioxide when it's generated or made from limestone but it absorbs it back in when it's used so it's a good product um, there's a, a c word that we don't use or try not to use around here called concrete which is a terribly destructive material really terrible um, and so there we are they have an outside um, shower as well, so they're... What are you doing out, Mrs? Just a second, I'll let's right. Oh, somebody left it. Yeah, you go back in, love. Go on. Somebody left the egg box open. This building was built by myself and a, a younger woman called Anise, um, who was an artist. And we built it high because she did. I've got to get one of those wood cuts up here. She did wood cuts, which is where you carve out a picture on wood and then use ink to make the impressions from it. So then you needed a place to hang it up, and so we put up this. Uh, we built it this high, but as it turned out, it, it, it worked out because there's a little sleeping space up there. Um, at the moment, it's kind of the library that hasn't been plastered yet. Um, you know, like everything on Salisbury on most things, it takes a while for, for things to get done. So a little bit more about the slip straw. Is it, uh, do you use it instead of insulation? Is yes, absolutely, yeah. So that we that dreadful pink insulation, which again is an oil product, and so not particularly um, eco. Um, instead of that, we use this. Uh, the insulation factor would be close, not quite as much as the pink, but but close enough to it. And in our climate, again, it's you know, um, 
insulation isn't a huge factor, particularly if you've got a wood stove and a decent supply of um, firewood. We put in a whole lot of um, fruit trees. Mm. And one of the women is a permaculture instructor. And so we designed it so that the, the water is, gets best use. This is our pond. And it's wonderful in the summer. It's about five feet in the middle, so it's, it's, um, it's quite swimmable. It, um, it is fed by, you see the little house over there, the roof? Yeah. Now I'm going to use the C word for a second, but underneath that there's a concrete box. And inside that box there's a spring. So our water comes up in there and it's probably the best water on the island. And the overflow flows into the, the pond. So we use the, the pond for irrigation and for swimming. This building here is our meditation hut. And uh, once I saw Molly and her people build the, the, uh, the cob house, I thought, oh, I've got to build something. So I've built it as an ellipse. Um, and Molly's is pretty well elliptical too, but not, not quite as pointy as this one. There's a mathematical constant called phi, not pi, um, which occurs in nature. In fact, here, the Fibonacci series, which generates phi. So I decided that I would, when I was build, designing this, I would have the, the long axis of the ellipse, phi times the short axis, and the height at the back, that's why it's so high, phi times the, sh the front. And sometimes when I'm showing this to people, before I mention the fire at all, they'd say, what's the vibration? They, they can actually feel the vibration in there. So this is used mostly for meditation and yoga. And it's a wonderful place to play music. This is a thing called wattle and daub. If you come over here, this is called the truth window. And you'll see the, the basketry, essentially. The way it was built, it's, we, it, um, it's essentially timber frame. So we've got two posts going up there, two here and two here. And then um, I put the roof on, which was, as it turned out, wise. Um, then between the joists, there's uh, basketry just like this. So we grow our own willow. So here, for instance, there are the risers. So there, there, there. So the, the willow is worked it in between those. And so what's the reason for the basket? Is it, is it to hold everything in there? To hold the plaster. So if we, if we decided to insulate it, but if we hadn't done, then simply what would have happened is like here, we just plaster it on the outside and there's your building. Right. Yeah, so gotcha. it's, a, it's a wonderfully um, sustainable way of building because it's mostly local material, except for the roof. Sure. We use metal roofs because they make so much sense. They're fast. They're not too expensive and they last. They yeah, last. The maintenance on them is pretty zero. Here we have probably the most, what, how should we describe this? Sustainable building on the property. A young man from Quebec. We get quite a few Quebec visitors. Um, this used to be a woodshed and then it became kind of a shelter and he decided to put extra walls on it and a door and so on and he lives very happily in there it's about oh, i don't know maybe certainly no more than 80 square feet <laughs> and he just loves it <laughs> and someday soon we'll get his solar fixed up so that he has light at night and here we have the octagon which i built again with a, a couch surfer's help i built the octagon just over five years ago I had always wanted to do one, but the thought of the roof scared me. An octagon is a wonderful building, a wonderful shape to live in. It's very close to a circle, but it's much easier to build. For instance, with the uh, meditation hut, because I wanted to keep the elliptical or oval shape, there was a lot of carpentry, a lot of you know cutting, specialized cutting that had to be done. So you'd have the same thing with a, a round building. Whereas with this, the walls are all straight, straight. And I like to say the cleaning lady hasn't come yet today, but what I mean is that it's chaos inside. Uh, 
I'm in the process of doing a few things, so... And is this, this is your place then? This is my place. I, um, I have a little kitchen out there and my shitter is over there and the bathhouse, which we take a look at in a while, is down there. I have a bedroom there, which I don't really use during the winter because just another place to heat. There's Mouse the cat, very important resident. So there is a bath and shower in the house which the people down the front use. Well, this is our willow, by the way. We use willow for uh, building, as you see, and I make baskets as well, so it gets <coughs> pretty well used. Willow is a wonderful material in that pretty soon, actually, we'll cut the, the willow right back down to there, and by the end of the summer, it'll be that tall. It's also a wonderful processor of um, what we call grey water. So the water, like black water is from, if you had a flush toilet, that's called black water. Grey water is from kitchen or um, bathroom, um, shower and bath and stuff. And so it just, it, it loves that. That's why it does so well here, is because the drain. So this is the bathhouse, we've got a wonderful shower and nice old tub and also laundry which I'd like to actually, another project is put a little wall across here so that when you're in your tub it's a little more luxurious looking. But you've got the, the view from there and the sun. This was built just before Molly had her first child and so both her babies were born here in the bath which is quite a wonderful, wonderful occasion. This um, has got more lime than usual in the, the material because it's in a, a wet environment, so it's more resistant to um, moisture and stuff. What is leaning even more? <laughs> <laughs> the leaning. This was... Um, a greenhouse when I came here first, you know, somebody covered with plastic and I moved it up here and put in a sauna and it was a wonderful little sauna because just about the right size um, but it hasn't been used as a sauna for a while, I didn't help. And this is where I lived for about 10 years, the hen house. Wow. And I just loved it. And in here we have the equivalent of a sauna actually. This is the brew house for the kombucha. Unless you get your bottle of kombucha before you leave. Wow, this is really cool. <laughs> yeah. So they're in the process of moving this down to a, a bigger building down, just down the valley. So this is a former hay shed. So this was a hay shed and um, the woman who lives here now, Erin Ann, was living in the sheep shack, which you'll see in a minute, with her boyfriend. And then he said, well, could I put a little office in here? So I said, well, OK. And next thing I know is, and I used to say to, to Brendan, I said, so Brendan, let me have a plan of what you're going to do. And he'd come down, he'd have a rectangle with maybe a line through the middle. That was it. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's see if Erin Ann is home. Oh, you're in luck today, we're getting inside the First of all, 80% of the material here is recycled, reused. So inside here are bricks and then covered with plaster. And so that's a, a heat sink. So she uses very little firewood because if you fire that up and then it just, it holds the... So the chimney, where does the... The, the chimney goes out there? here. Oh, I see there, there yeah. it is. And then up the side. Gotcha. The truth window again. To show you the slip straw. There's, there's a rule on salt springs that you could not get a permit, for instance, to build this, but for a renovation, you don't need a permit. So it's a renovation because this post was actually, not that we care here, but some people might. That's part of the original building. <laughs> so the original 
roof was this height here. And then we cut the roof down the middle and raised it up to there. That was a lot of fun. That's amazing. This is a great building. Oh, this is beautiful, yeah. Very beautiful. Before I built the octagon, I used to say that if Ernan left, I'd move in here. Right. Because it's, it's really quite beautiful. So this was the original floor level, and then we dug down to there, to give that level down there. She and her girlfriend did all the tiling. And a very good decision she made was to put the kitchen and living room space up here, which makes a lot of sense because theoretically in the bedroom you go there to sleep. Um, so the view from here again on a, a clear day is quite beautiful. Wow, this kitchen is magnificent here. Isn't it funny? Isn't it lovely? Yeah, she did all this tiling. Um, this stove was on the exchange, it was about to go to the dump. And when I asked about it, he said, well, the front right burner doesn't come on automatically anymore. So it had to be replaced. I mean, was sick. So when I went to see it, I thought, I'm going to grab this. And I somehow manhandled this into the truck on my own because the guy had a bad back. Um, and then we got it up here. But Amazing. The, the disparity between the rich and the poor here is something, it, well, you'll probably see it out in the, the West Coast as well. That the rich folks just have, they have no concept of, you know, the value of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's broken? Throw it out. Oh, this, the, the couch. She's so cool. That's where she has her couch surfers. I've seen four grown men sitting up there. <laughs> it looks like it's, it's, um, now when we put it in, we made sure that it was well anchored. <laughs> it looks like it's almost floating. It does. Yeah, that's a really cool feature. I like that. So this building started out as, as I said earlier, just uh, a roof and three walls. And then we put a sliding glass door here, actually. And that was the building for a long, long time. I actually lived here myself for a year once when I was between housing. Um, and then somebody moved, it, somebody else moved in and sort of extended it a bit and then it got extended more and then this roof got on so it's like topsy and growed. And uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful building. Amazing. So, you're just sitting and dog sitting. Yeah, just playing with the yeah. dog. Yeah. I want to take a walk, but... Okay, so there we are. That's, uh, is that everything then? That's it. Okay. I'd like to get my, um, my solar system to, to charge up the cars at least so we could then say the cars cost nothing to run. Okay. You said you have electric cars? Yeah, down here. Ah. I don't leave the island, so electric is fine for me. This is my little smart car. Cool. Which, um, it's, it's got a retractable roof. I used to have a Miata and I kind of missed the Miata. I was trying to electrify the Miata, but um, the, with today's battery, like the battery technology, the way it is, they'd be too heavy mm -hmm. for the... The, the suspension uh, you'd have suspension. to upgrade, yeah. yeah. This Ooh. is the farm stand, eh? This is the farm stand, and people, unfortunately, have started to use it as kind of a, a free store, which works okay until you have a pile of clothes and stuff, but then we can just take those along. But um, right now, it's mostly... Chocolate, and of course kombucha. Amazing. Yeah. Tinctures. Somebody does some hotel oh, yeah. stuff here. Somebody's a herbalist on the farm. Well, actually, we've got three of them. Well, no, two now because um, Jordan decided she lived in that cabin up there with her boyfriend, and they decided that it's time to be independent. <coughs> and there's some of the medicinal. Oh, I see. Wow. And, and these are the, uh, the beeswax. beeswax wraps, which have been a huge success. 
Yeah, that's mm-hmm. great. What inspired you originally to buy this land? Hmm. I was living in Toronto. I'd been a professor there for a number of years. I Prior to that, I was working in the computer business at Lever Brothers, which is one of the major polluters in the country. And I was an active alcoholic, which is a terrible way to live, but I managed. Um, I decided to quit drinking and I was able to stick with it for 30 years now. Um, And in the process, I managed to track down an ex-girlfriend who was called Donna back then, and she was living in, all I knew was her name was Donna Taylor, and she was probably in Anchorage, Alaska, and I managed to find her. And she came down to Toronto, and uh, we had 10 days together, a lot of fun, and as we, she left at the airport, she said, um, we said, well, now we're, we're both mature. She had just quit drinking as well. We used to drink a lot in Europe together. Um, so let's not make any hasty decisions. Okay. So it was six weeks before she moved from Anchorage to <laughs> Toronto. Anyway, the upshot was at a party one night, somebody showed, we were thinking of buying a weekend cottage, which are terrible bloody things, right? And uh, somebody said, oh, I know just the place for you. South Spring Island, and she had a picture of a little farm here. Donna and I looked at it, looked at the pictures, and we said, yeah, we'll buy it. <laughs> and Heather, the woman who showed us the picture, said, oh, no, please go out and see it. And we said, no, we can trust you, you know. You're... And said, please. So 10 days later, we flew out, took one look down the valley and said, yeah. And so I finished up the year at university, and we came out here in June of that year. What was the decision making? I don't know, but it was certainly the best decision I've ever made. Um, It was the sort of thing I might have done when I was drinking, but it wouldn't have followed through with, whereas um, this way it was great. And it's worked well. Um, As I say, not without its odd wrinkles, but by and large, we get along well. We don't congregate a lot. We usually have a communal dinner uh, in the house or else in the cottage, which is a little tighter, at Thanksgiving pre-Christmas, because by Christmas people are gone all over the place, and possibly again at Easter. Um, but we're all friends and help out, help each other out and so on. One of the places I would like to call it, it doesn't have a name, I would like to call it a hamlet. A hamlet being a village without a church. We definitely don't have a church. Um, but during, not this summer, this winter wasn't too bad, but the winter before there was a lot of snow and we were cut off here for oh, about a week. Not really cut off, but you know, the roads were bad and so on. And it really felt like a little village. You know, I could go to, to Air Nance for lunch and I could, somebody could come to see me and it really felt wonderful. And the kids, of course, are, are a huge asset. It's wonderful to see them growing up. Whoa, yeah. What are some of the benefits of um, this sort of lifestyle that you live? Well, I think the main benefit is that it makes, it, it's helped me to feel good. I know I'm doing the right thing, despite the fact that the government doesn't uh, approve yet. Um, so we're making good use of a lovely piece of property uh, with as little um, deleterious effect on it as possible. As I said earlier, we have no flush toilets, so we use human manure, which goes back into the soil, which makes sense. Where did it come from in the first place? Um, and a feeling of community. Um, I'm getting older, which the process cannot be stopped other than (laughs) going that way. Um, So it's nice to have people around and it's, um, yeah, it feels really good. The the rents on Salisbury are absolutely ridiculous. They're terrible. And I know several people, not just younger, but several people who have to work two or three jobs just to make ends meet. Whereas our people here, because I own the land and because my despite the fact that I have an electric car. My needs are pretty well minimal. I don't travel anymore. So I can afford to rent places out at probably a quarter of what it would be um, in Ostrid, that's the the beeswax lady, a quarter of the the going rate on Salisbury. So, yeah, it feels good. Right. Um, What are some of the challenges that you face? The challenges are, 
you know, in, in a in a let's say in a marriage or a relationship, you've got two people, and uh, here we've got fourteen. So the, the challenges can be great, but in fact they're not. Um, the challenges are the government regulations that they right now they're trying to to impose fines that are just ridiculous, and so it means that I have to spend time going fighting. I've been fighting those regulations for 25 years with almost no luck. Um, I don't understand why they're so reluctant to admit that this is a good way to live. We've had one of the trustees walk around here and she said that she liked it. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But as far as I understand, there is no way they can close us down. Absolutely. There are no regulations in place that would. And if they try to, then we have enough of a, a support group, if you like. Other people who are doing something similar, like Phoenix, um, who would gather together. And I think that the, up, the upshot would be just crazy. Yeah, for we'll sure. Maybe get the Mohawks and the to attend and give us, give us ideas. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, do you have somewhere that you'd like to direct people? Do you guys have a website for this place? or, or? I don't have a website for it, but what you're doing now, if you can get the, some of this video material even to me, may be enough to encourage me to put up a website. Sure. I have SaveSaltSpring.com, which was a website which was set up ooh, 20 years ago to fight the logging. So SaveSaltSpring.com, and there's, there's some material on there. But to get a really good feel for this place, no, we don't really have anything. Do you have any anything that you'd like to um, direct people to, or, or sort of any sort of ending notes for the video? Like, would you want people to come and check out the farm? We stand? love people. We love people to come and visit. We love people to to do the tour like you did. Maybe not in quite as much detail, but um, and take as many pictures as you like. The more publicity we get for this way of living, the better I feel about what we're doing. Great. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank That's you for everything. Hey everybody, I'm Forrest the Filmmaker, the person behind the video that you just watched. If you enjoyed that and want to check out more alternative dwellings, we have a playlist popping up that is all the episodes that we've ever done. There's van tours, tiny home tours, sailboats, off-grid, uh, garden tours, all sorts of cool stuff, so check that out. We also uh, release new episodes every single Monday at 8.30 Eastern Time, and that's in the morning. And if you want to check out some curated things that I've done and some movies that I've actually made, you can check out a link below to Prime Video, and you can check out the reality of hashtag van life, best friends, moments, and curated alternative dwellings. So check that out. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode.